Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Agency Life. We're on a roll. We had a break. We had the summer, but now we're back, and I have a very, very special guest with me today. I met Faze last week, and he's from FISMA, FISMA with the Z, um, digital agency, his own agency. He came up to me after my talk at, uh, when I was in DAX on New York City last week, full of energy, full of life. I couldn't wait to talk to him. I couldn't wait to get him on the podcast. He's from Atlanta, Georgia, and he describes himself as a natural born entrepreneur, starting out as selling phone cases from ca to selling candies and pop sockets. And that's where he got involved and also was selling a fidget spinner. <laughs> that gradually yeah. moved into, I love that, that's gradually moved into his own agency. So welcome to the show phase. Really excited. Tell us, how fidget spinners turned into an agency. Yeah, so um, event, you know, I first started out, I was really young, um, just selling phone cases, fidget spinners, pop sockets. Um, fidget spinners was actually, you know, let me start from the beginning. Um, yeah. It was more of candies, phone cases to kids. Then we started selling um, these pop sockets, the cool things that go back on the back of your phone. That progressed to, um, we like, so we have suppliers in China um, that were sending us things through their warehouse in Canada. So they'd yeah. send things to Canada. They'd be there five day shipping. So we would get them as soon as they were available. They mentioned to us, they see like a, a demand of this thing going up. And they're like, for some reason, people are buying these spinny things. And they're like, nobody knows what they are. And we're like, maybe you guys should take a look at them. We're like, okay, cool. So we bought you know, a few hundred of them. Um, and then that's when the, just, the trend went crazy. And everybody <laughs> wanted one. We were the only people that had them at the time because yeah. ordering them online would take a while. So we started selling. We're ordering thousands. We're selling out, yeah, right? And then that progressed into a, a free supply program is what it's called. But what it was was we'd give kids a lot of like 10, 15 fidget spinners. They'd sell it to their friends. And when we were, they were buying from us, they're getting a discounted price. So we'd sell it to the kids for $3. They'd buy 10, which is bulk uh, at the time. <laughs> and then they'd resell it for $5, keeping $2. And they'd come back to us over and over. So at that point, we had a little army of kids reselling for us. Um, we made around ten to 15000 I think, off of that. That money was used to start my first startup, which was right. called Eversent. Um, you can still probably search it up, Eversent Kickstarter. But uh, it was a little device. It's like an air freshener for the real person. So you'd oh. walk and make you smell good. Uh, you could attach it to the purse, to your buckle, keep it in your pocket as a necklace. Um, and for that, we did a, a very large marketing campaign. So aside from the video, which I, I think I paid like four grand for, which was crazy. Uh, keep in mind, I only have at this point, it's like bootstrapped everything. I only have the money I made off the fidget spinners. Right. Um, along with that, um, I got into, you know, Upwork and uh, Fiverr. And you guys are all familiar with that, all the audience yeah, probably. Yeah, but, absolutely. Um, so I started using that stuff. I became very familiar with it. Um, I had those guys put together my Kickstarter correctly. Then we started Facebook ads. We targeted people that were looking for um, scent bracelets. There was, these, there was our competitor, and we did our first retargeting campaign off of that. And um, in the first, I think, 10 days, we raised 5000 or $2,000. Halfway through, a licensing company reaches out to me. They're like, you stop the campaign right now. We're going to buy the company off of you. And I mean, looking wow. back, maybe I, maybe I should have ended the campaign, but looking back, I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. And I'm like, cool, I paused the campaign. So even if you were to go look back at the campaign now, it says canceled. It was just canceled and there's no, no reason. Way. And it says, we're coming back. Yeah, it says it's halfway through and it says canceled. Um, <laughs> so we, we sent them all the supplies. Um, the prototypes I built were on the 3D printer. I designed it myself. So I sent them all the files. I sent them the prototypes and they're doing their thing now. So with, from that startup, I realized my success came from marketing. Mm -hmm. And I like always being on a platform business. I like helping other people on the same level do the same thing. Yeah. Through whatever product I have. Right. Um, so I was like, marketing worked amazing. Let me get into that. Uh, I had experience with websites because I had to build my own landing pages. So I started like that. I had a few family friends. Um, I was like, let me build your website. Um, if you just tell your few friends that you have that I make websites and um, refer to them, they're like, for sure. So made a few websites, um, insurance websites. I've made a few um, flower bouquet websites and uh, a restaurant website. And after that, it just referrals slowly started coming in. And that's when I had to really figure out where it's not a one-man show. I had to hire somebody. I hired a graphic designer, which mm -hmm. I tried to make into a project manager, and it failed really badly because okay. he was only good at graphic design, not at managing. 
Yeah. Um, Got to find people for their, their I, strengths. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And then every time I'd be like, yo, can you send this email to him where I try to close the sale? He's like, I'm not good at that. And I'm like, you can get good. So in my head, I'm thinking, you know, I want to, I want to be like train or make another version of me, which would never happen. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. So that yeah. happened. You're the entrepreneur. You've t turned your hand to things. And uh, stay, stay right to the end, everyone, on this podcast. We've got a bit of a reveal because there is a wealth of knowledge in this man. And you're going to find out some very interesting things as you go along through this. I think that's interesting that you went from the tactical product and in, in, in through that process, um, coming up with ideas and finding other opportunities. What kind of stuff does FISMA do right now? What's the kind of specialized area? And tell us how big you are. And are you just in Atlanta, Georgia? Mm -mm. So we have global clients. Um, we have people from Atlanta, a few in Cali, Florida, um, a few in the Middle East, actually. They have like these cool, they're doing a lot of blockchain stuff there. So a few uh -huh. clients there, some ride share. So worldwide, we're global. Um, we like to start with the websites and app development. So right. we do an amazing job on that. Our work is a lot more creative, a lot more open. It's from scratch up. So right. it's like, if you want a cutting edge, you know, cool looking, um, with cool loading pages, all that stuff, we'd get you the development. But one big, we do ads, of course, um, we do the content creation, but somewhere, something we do that most people don't or don't do to our level, our scale is social media. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people have a social media network. Yeah. But not only do we have a social media network of hundred million, we all, and then we get 3.5 billion views a month, a month wow. through that. The, the big thing through us is we not, we also create our own content. So it's not all through a partner or media buying network. It's more of, we create the content and we build those accounts ourselves. Got it. So, and the, the way literally we started that, I had a friend, his name's Ryan Miglo. Ryan, if you're watching this, hey, uh, he used to work at Wave TV and Wave TV is the fastest growing um, sports media company, I think in the world at, at this point. Um, and I, I asked him, we were on a call one day, I'm like, how did you guys do it? He said, just post content, quality content over and over and the audience will come. And that's literally what we did. We started, originally we started on bots, all the accounts got shut down. Um, yeah. And anything that didn't get shut, shut down, Instagram now made a new update, which I'm really happy we've changed our strategy now because yes. I would have gotten destroyed. But we made our content purely on have amazing content creators, amazing editors, amazing, amazing videographers who are passionate about the niche the Instagram account is on. Yeah. And then with that, they're posting two to three times a day. Uh, what I've seen them do is usually make all the content in one day or two days. And yeah. over the next 30 days, they post it multiple times a day. Yeah. Um, they take snippets of one big video, make it into smaller videos. IGTV is performing really well. Um, we slowly moved into Snapchat where we have a TikTok content creation team. So that's led <laughs> wow. to a lot of our referrals. You must have loved when Gary V stood up the other day to talk about and when he said he was keeping an eye on TikTok and he start, he's been on there for oh. a while. What do you think the resubmergence of um, Snapchat's about, just out of curiosity? Because I was on there ages and so, ages ago and then I shut it down because of stories and then I seem to have got it back on my phone again magically. Snapchat, I feel, is an amazing communication tool. It's like some kids, text messaging takes too long, especially in school. Right. Um, so in, in school, if you don't have Wi-Fi, your texts aren't going through, but your snaps are going through because of the Wi-Fi, use a VPN. There's a lot of these tricks. So their age range is all, most majority of it is under 30, especially under 25, yeah. right? None of them are business oriented. So if you're trying to make a digital podcast, it's not going to work, Got right? Um, what, would, what will work is, weird freaky things cool things uh things that make you like uh like grin or it's just literally childish things would work yeah. but the rate from getting people from snapchat to just watching to converting into actual buyers is very low yes yeah statistically it's, it's very low yeah it's entertainment it's just, it, platform yeah it's pretty and the, the ads on there are also harder to figure out because everybody's so the biggest ad strategy on there is to put a promote uh what is it called um an article mm -hmm. and it'll be a cool headline myself i always scroll up on these headlines but now i've become used to looking at the corner scene who says ad right. realizing i'm never going to actually get the you know the actual story but that's one of the best ways to get them to slide up but it's so commonly used people are already like immune to it, Got it. so i don't Fantastic. see much with that yeah, it's interesting. I, I just found it fascinating that I was hearing about it again. I was like, mm, why does that come back? I thought it was interesting. But let's step back to- I haven't heard to, anybody talk about it. Yeah. That, just, like, I've heard TikTok, but- Yes. 
yeah. It, no, just, music yeah. Yeah. it was kind of, it was sort of interesting. Um, but let's go back to when those first early days, because this uh, of when you were working, um, opening mm-hmm. the doors of your, you know, virtu- your agency. How did you actually get the first clients? Like, what was your strategy for, you wanted to do web, you had all this experience. What did you do to get your first clients? Um, oh, cold call. I still remember my first client um, oh, yeah. that I organically got that they paid me. It's just, I have a picture of me jumping with a check. Of course, my first client would be my biggest check. Yeah. Um, I cold called. I made a list. I went on Yelp. Um, I just, anybody, I was like, oh, his website doesn't look nice. And this is what I'm thinking about it. Um, we have a few more strategies too, but, you know, we keep them for ourselves because oh, they're just killer yeah. strategies. <laughs> um, but, I mean, we'll maybe talk about that in the future, but. Yeah. Pretty much anything that didn't look nice, um, I put it on an Excel sheet, got the number, email, name of the business. I sat there and I cold called. Um, two days went by, nobody picked up. I mean, people picked up, they hung up on me, they said they didn't need it. One guy picked up and he was like, oh, yeah, you know, we're looking for uh, somebody to our web design. I'm like, awesome. And I, I, I immediately, you know, I went crazy. I started following up with email. I followed up over and over until he got us to come in. Uh, I had a, my manager or a graphic designer at yeah. the time. So we both went in. We did a brainstorming session. We made a lot of mistakes, but we did like four presentations total. And then they decided to give us the c- contract. It was $5,000 uh, e-commerce yeah. website. We, we didn't include product pictures. So then they gave us everything. Right. It was awesome. No, we, we included some product pictures, but we didn't do all of it. We didn't do too much. But from there, we were our goal was to you know, get into ads and stuff. But I mean, since it's been like a year and a half, two years now, since that, what happened was, we made the, the, the project done, right? I had a really bad outsourcing team. Uh-huh. Um, it, went, it, went, it went really bad because not only did they not deliver work on time or correctly, my client kept my, asking for changes. So he'd be like, you know, I want this. And we'd be like, cool, we give him the mock-ups. He's like, I love it. Then he'd be like, actually, you know, I, was, I had a dream last night and I, <laughs> I, I think it looks better like this. And he was, uh, the type of client he was, was um, he's like a mind reader. So he had like a yoga the therapeutic so he, he he did stuff like that and he's like right. no i have a vision it's better like this and we kept changing and i kept allowing the changes um so what was supposed to take one and a half month took six months oh. and at the end he was not happy he which i thought was amazing he was like this page is really good but everything else is all right and, and I, I looked at him like really no like really like, yeah you're never that man's never gonna be happy he still doesn't have a website that he's happy with <laughs> and a classic mistake and then he there. went Mm. And then what he did after that, we were like, okay, so now you need to get sales, let's do ads. And he was like, he was like, we got to do ads now. And I went, no, no, no. mate. Mm-mm. You I'm had like, your we can't first... do it for this, this reason. Yeah. You had your first yeah, experience we just... of going, no, like, and you were probably early on in the days of what agencies learn after a long period of time. Um, the ability to say no, just to go there. You're not a good fit for this business. And just shut it down. That's fascinating. But that messed me up, like, because it was my first client, and I also had to fire that client. And (laughs) I was traveling around the world. I did like a world trip um, to explore. So I was in Paris at the time. Facebook ad account got shut down because I kept logging in through different countries. Everything was going crazy. Two months after that, I had no clients. I was just sitting there. I was literally depressed (laughs) with no clients, no money. I'm running out, and I'm like, what do I do at this point? Um, I tried all these cool different strategies you see on YouTube. At the end, I ended up cold calling again. I was like, so I got my first client. I kept calling around. Um, I don't remember my second client. I guess I wasn't hype enough. Right. But, uh, I think it, it, we did some a few here and there, small gigs. And then that's when our referrals started going. We started right. doing some more free work. More referrals started coming in. And after that point, I realized I need a solid team um, that knows what they're doing, number one. I've seen their work. I need to test their projects out. But mm-hmm. more importantly, the client needs to understand what we're going to get them and yeah. they need to have we have our limits and they have their limits like meaning three changes requested you can't change it too much after this but yeah so we just after that it's pretty much been referrals just Great. coming in right yeah. word of mouth clear and clear about what mm-hmm. they're going to get what's the team structure like talk to me about the size and how do you organize the team who manages who what's crazy is yeah so pretty much um we're at five figures we're pushing to get to six figures a month in right. the next uh, six, seven months. Yeah. Um, at the moment, what's been is myself, right? Uh, I have managers. So it's myself at the top. I have managers who have web development teams. So they manage their web development teams. So the sectors, it. right? Yeah. I've been overloaded now. So literally, like, 
I'm in the office right now because I just hired a, another project manager. So now it's going to be me. Him managing the operations. So he's a manager for my managers. So Morning. hopefully this should help us, you know, get to the next yeah. level. Um, and he has a lot of experience. Uh, you guys will hear a lot about him in the future. But yeah, so at the moment, it's me managing yes. the managers who get the work done. Um, I am guilty of working in the business a lot because I still feel my web development skills are like next level. So I always <laughs> end up, like, let me keep 100% margin on this. Let me do the job myself. But right. The only way to go from five figures a month to six figures is for me to build out the infrastructure yeah, and have that, the framework with solid SOPs to get us to the next level. Yeah. Maybe we give you some pet projects to do. <laughs> so that you're like not in the business. You're going, here, have a little pet project and go crack on, do that in the mm -hmm. evenings. So as the owner of the business, you are now focused on um, speaking and being creative and um, being a visionary. Talk to me some more about now that you've got your system in place, you've got your managers, manager, people doing the work, trying to keep yourself out of doing the hands-on work. But talk to me about your, the, the other roles that you're focusing on. Um, my biggest picture, so building this brand up, I was quiet. Uh, so now I'm getting out there speaking because yep. I love doing strategy. I love brainstorming with the client, helping them see the true vision of their business. So all I'm doing now is I get pulled into meetings. I'm going to focus on, Hey, let's get this. This is the strategy. This is the outlook. Here's how we're going to do it. I give the client their end of what it's going to look like. I help my team figure out how to do it and actually logistically make it happen. Excellent. Um, what I want to focus on more is just personal brand building. So I'm getting into, I'm putting together mastermind, I'm um, putting together my own podcast. Honestly, you're my inspiration. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> I, I saw you do it. I was like, mm, this seems awesome. I like the concept. Yes. So we're getting into that. I'm putting together. Um, this, there's a lot of stuff on the way. It's just more personal brand and how right. I did it. I would to do it for other people. Free value. Yeah. You're at, you're heading back over to New York next week. You've got a gig on there. Um, Talk to us about that. I'm going. Yes. Yeah, so I'm going to be there from the eight to the 16th i believe but pretty much uh, i have some family there so i'm going to visit but yeah. um a few of the things i have to do there is we're sourcing together a, a real estate event because uh so let me get into that having your own stage having yes. a, a event throwing your own event for a very niche client or clientele base gets yeah. amazing results so as a section to our big agency we have a real estate agency and that's an our niche down agency so a lot of people will start out niche right yeah. My goal was to be the next Gary Vee or something like that. I want a full service off the start. Yeah. The only way I was able to accomplish that was after a while of running the agency, I realized I had to niche down. Mm -hmm. So instead of starting a whole new business or changing my business, I made a branch of the business Got that was niche yeah. down. It was right. hyper niche. Actually, it was toward real estate agents that wanted websites. Yes. And we managed the licensing software to make the website and all that stuff. So our target was just real estate agents who need websites. It's very simple. We built up a clientele base. It's very simple monthly subscription program on that. Mm -hmm. They can also bundle ads with it. And then after that, they start referring me other business because some of their clients are commercial and they have businesses. And that's how we ended up actually keeping our full service image yep. while having, re it's called Refisma. So it's just F-I-S-M-M-A, but it has R in front. Oh, R -E, like for so the real estate. Re real estate. Smart. Yeah. So we're throwing a real estate event to go back to our, our niche. Um, and what the real estate event is, it's, it's, our goal is to have 500 agents there yep. um, of all types. We're going to offer them free value. We're going to teach them exactly how to grow in the business. But at the end of the day, they all need a website. So it's not like we're force feeding them, force selling them the website. Nope. They have a website, awesome. They can go right away and start implementing the strategy. They don't have a website. We're not only one of the best created designs, but we have one of the best CRM management systems in the back end with our software. So we're there for them if they need the website. And we see that converting into like a high volume of sales. And I'll keep you guys updated with that and how that yeah, goes. Yeah, super smart. When you say we, who did you partner with? Who's going to be on the stage? Like, is it a variety of different people? So uh, I have a few friends that manage uh, online webinar and expos. So um, we're going to live stream it. So we're going to have a few live stream speakers. But I'm, I'm still looking together to put together a team of uh, real estate agents, uh, real estate gurus. Yeah. We're putting that together at the moment. Yeah, because you could probably get go, you know, out into like expand out into time management, health and wellness. Mm -hmm. It could be, mm -hmm. you know, the best um, boarding and, um, you know, the boards and the like the display. Um, love that mm -hmm. idea. Like that is going very. That's a really interesting way of uh, niching out. Thinking. I was, yeah, I was speaking to. Hmm. 
I was speaking to Ryan I, I, or I, one of the other speakers and he was talking about start niche. And I was like, hmm, what we did was we started full service, yes. but we made a branch that was hyper niche. The hyper niche yeah. branch let us, you know, service those clients and any referrals we got, we sent to the full yeah. service. Um, so th that really differentiated us in growing and helped us actually accelerate our growth because we know we were only running ads for the niche business, right? But not, a, and then we have a section on the website as well. It's like, aren't a real estate agent still need development services and it takes you back to the original site. Beautiful. I love that. Um, t talk to us some more because I, I think we can sort of pick up a thread that was there with Jasmine Starr was on stage last week talking about Instagram. She did a whole lot of deep dive on what digital agencies could um, leverage from the Instagram world. And I know personally, I don't see a lot of agency owners um, on Instagram, or if I do, I see them doing things that I probably are a little bit cringy. Tell us about, because I think this yeah. is my audience is digital agency owners, and some of them weren't obviously weren't there with Jasmine Starr. If you, if you were ever thinking of looking up um, her her content, it was very good. But talk to I us did. About, yeah. yeah, talk to us about an agency. What what you've seen? What what could it be? What could an agency do? And especially with the Instagram, I think is a big one. A lot of them are on LinkedIn now. They're doing their videos, but talk to us about what you see for that for an agency. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, for sure. So a lot of agencies, what I see them making the big mistake is they're telling with their posts, with their stories. First of all, most of them, even ourselves, we don't post on Instagram. Right. We should be, we have a lot bigger audience. Yeah. But then again, we're high, high clientele. We're moving into fortune 500 only. Yeah. We're at fortune 5,000. So, you know, our clients are wasting time on Instagram, but I, we are going to get into it. I'm guilty of it myself, but a lot of agencies are teaching their clients how to run their businesses, which they don't like. So they're going, you know, they're giving analytics data. 50% of consumers do this or they buy this. They're going, um, using Instagram or using this platform will lead to this much growth. That's not, that doesn't help. No. Like getting statistics, cool. You know, but what business owners need and want, which gets you a lot of engagement, a lot of reshares is problem or what, the, what their problem is, you address it. This also goes into being niched because you know exactly what the problem is if you're niched down. Right. And then you give them a solution. And that doesn't mean like huge bios or huge, con what is it called? Uh, huge the, uh, captions the, all full the of captions. Uh, like yeah. huge stories. Yeah, that, that, that doesn't help. If the captions too long, the algorithm is going to think it's spam. Um, but what you want is, I'm going to give you an example. We have a dentist, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we used help him with the strategy. His strategy was he wants... Oh, this is a bad example. Uh, let me let me put it in the face of a digital agency. A right. digital agency wants clients who are dentists, right? They're hyper niche toward dentists. Um, what they're doing is their post says need more braces clients. Yeah. Target your ads toward this. Make sure you're running promotions regarding get one off, buy one, get the next month free, or right. pretty much giving their problem. They don't have enough clients for this little yeah. product or this area how they're going to solve it um and give us some action steps and make it shareable so that's one type of post you also want a very shareable post so then again your clients are dentists yeah you're hyper niche right we're talking uh theoretically why not post a funny relatable dentist video even if you don't relate to it you got to understand the content's not to please you it's to please your audience to yeah. have them like it so to have a video of um ever, uh ever have a, a customer that makes you feel like this and it just, it'll be the dentist squirting um, yeah. the, the washi fluid everywhere. The dentist is going to laugh. be like, ha ha ha. They're going to yeah. share it to their other dentist friends Yeah, because nobody else gets it. Only dentist gets this post. So they're going to share it to more dentist friends. We're all going to end up following the agency. And then yeah. once every two weeks you want to put a promotion out there. Hey guys, we're doing websites for this much cheaper. Yeah. That should be once every two weeks or some people do it twice a month. I like That's that. That's the only time you keep promoting. Yeah, I think what people have to remember that it's entertainment, especially Instagram. People are looking to be entertained, to be visually entertained now with videos. And then being likable, being under, going, oh, that agency understands me. I'm the buyer, the buyer persona, the dentist. And then hitting them out with something valuable. I think that's a really, mm -hmm. really good point. And um, with, with that in mind, what, like we just talked really briefly about TikTok. Where do you feel that is going? I know right now, 
I downloaded it a few weeks it's ago. Crazy, yeah. yeah, I have it on there. I'm looking. Um, my teenage self is getting <laughs> looking at the kids dancing and I love trance and I'm like, will I do that? And I was going, mm, possibly not, but maybe I will. <laughs> what do you think as a business owner they should be doing looking at TikTok right now? The crazy thing about TikTok is we've, so we've tested a few things, right? Completely failed a few things. And now some of our content creators are getting 1.2 million views each video. Wow. Um, they're getting 400,000 likes and we're like, wow. And what did they do? They literally did the stupidest things that nobody else would do because of their ego. And it was crazy funny and people follow right. or um, literally the more attractive you are, the more followings you're getting on TikTok. People are following because they think the person is cool personally yeah. as a personal preference taste or they're following because that person is crazy funny. I, I, I'll say this now and I'll say it again, I guess, unless something changes, I don't see any business B2B impact on TikTok whatsoever. Right. Because the whole audience is not only they're all in Asia. I don't, I don't know how many people have noticed it. The majority of the audience is in Asia. To yeah. Get Asian to buy U.S. products is really hard. Yeah. I saw, well, sure, they have everything in their own country. So, <laughs> yeah. And, if, and, if, and they should, they could make it for a fifth of the price. So, why mm -hmm. would they be? Yeah. I saw, I watched a documentary the other day, a really famous YouTube guy. He's a singer. I, the name escapes me, but he has been hired by. A TikTok content company in China. That's what we're doing, in a sense. Yeah, to make his own, to make his like he would have been huge in America, and then not so much because of the YouTube slaps. And now he basically creates funny song videos in Chinese. He's learning Chinese for TikTok. Oh, that's cool! Fascinating. Yeah, it is. I'll find the link for you. I'll send it through. It was really interesting. So, talk to me about what what would the the hashtags that are uh, that are on there, the words that are on there. How do they relate? So, TikTok. Um, I I'm not like I said. It's a newer yeah. platform, so I don't know too yeah. much. But I know they're not. I, I think they're not working on what Instagram is working on. Yeah. A lot of people might not be familiar. Instagram, their hashtags, if they don't match, they aren't relevant to your picture. They're yeah, building they're, their own search engine optimization yeah, type tool thing. But if it is not relevant to your hashtags, it's not going to rank. Yeah, TikTok, you can't I don't have Kim Kardashian and a picture of your agency up there. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Don't that carry on. Yeah. Um, but That's with TikTok, everybody's using hashtag, front page, hashtag for you, all that stuff. I feel like it, it, it literally works. Then again, you engage with the platform. They push you up. You respond to all your comments. They push you up. Same yeah. stuff. Nice. I love that. Um, one of these things here, we, you know, in your agency, it seems like you've figured out a few things. And I love to ask agency owners when they had a bit of an aha moment. And yours came around when you just realized that you could not keep micromanaging and doing everything yourself. What was the yeah. point? What was the point before that? Because there's, that's always, there's always a right point up to this aha moment. Talk to me about where you were and what happened there. For us, it was like, I'm making 12, 13,000 a month. Yeah. I'm like, this is awesome. Like, right. I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm is. making, and the big thing was it was 90, 90% margins. So it's, I made 13, I took home 11 yes. and I'm buying cars, <laughs> I'm buying cool things. You're I, buying, I into you're buying leopards, you're buying cheetahs. Yeah, I know. I hear it all. Yeah. I mean, because as an agency owner that came from being broke and having no class for a few months to doing so well, I'm saving, I, I'm, living right it's all me that's like yeah. a salary i'm getting for working for myself whenever i want right the thing was i did not get to spend any time with family my friends were non-existent at that point it was like i was like do i really want to do this like the money is right. cool but then in my head i'm like you know i would use that money to pay to get more time and to get my friends back and to have fun and be happy again um so that's the point where i came is i was like why did i even start this i sat down drawing board um and I, I started figuring out, I started it because I love the creative aspect of helping mm -hmm. people grow. Yeah. And that's when I was like, you know, it's, it's time for me to tell everybody I own the company. Um, one. And two, the only way for me to grow this business and get to do what I love is have people do what they love doing in our agency. So my graphic designers love doing graphic design. I'm going to let them focus on graphic. I love doing creative and strategy. I'm going to focus on that and have somebody do the other. Thing. So that's when I did that. And short term, I went from making 11, 12 to making a few hundred dollars a month. Right, it was hard, but that yeah. let me focus on getting more clients. And when I focused on getting more clients, all I'm doing is pumping out clients, putting, giving it into my little pipeline, and they're taking care of it. Now we have residuals that are more than 10k a month alone, mm -hmm. so paid off long term. Yeah, 
that, that definitely making that clear why. I think that's what happens us. We get into the business and it is fun and it is great crack and you're making yeah. money and you're doing what you love. But that then there's this whole absolute, there's nothing else going on. And you've forgotten what you even yeah. like to do for fun. You know, you know, doing something for fun is sleeping, do you know, <laughs> like it becomes, yeah, a it becomes a job. Yeah, it just becomes a job. So how do you manage things now? Talk to us about some of that, that like, you're going back over your, how do you manage, you're going back over to New York. So how do you manage? What's like some of the personal you do? Mm -hmm. So one thing I did, and this happened as a result of other reasons. Yeah. Um, but I never let that client get attached to me. Oh, I always told cool. them I was a project manager. So they were never attached to me as a person. They were attached to our quality of the work. Got it. And a lot of people make it their agency. They're making it into a personal brand, which is a crucial mistake. Because you'll never be able to move out without your clients being like, no, I want you back. I want you managing my project. Um, so I was never a big part to them on the front end of their project, yeah. even though I was running the show behind. So since I was never in the front end of the project, I always had somebody who'd go talk to them, who'd follow up with them. Um, so it's just the automation, a solid yes. framework, and nice SOPs. And because of that, I have my job. I take care of my job. I can do it remotely. As long as everybody follows what their job is, it runs in a nice, smooth yeah. system. I think that does become, I've seen that happen an awful lot. The agency owner is involved in the sales process. And what happens is even though the, you, even though you're explaining, here's my team, there's this perception that comes because you're the owner. They, they, they get emotionally attached to you. They get, yeah. um, this, Oh, I want you involved in this because you're the owner. You're going to make me feel special. And you have all this mm -hmm. other advice. And to try and extricate yourself out of that can be very difficult. Great advice on put your another work, thing. Mm -hmm. put your work so forward like, and, and talk about the, you know, you're a project manager and talk about the work, but go on. What else? Yeah. So, um, uh, I'm, about, I'm about to lose thought, but what it was, was pretty much, uh, damn, I forgot. No, but that's it was my regarding, no, no, it's not, I, I should have not interrupted, but I just had the thought and I was like, Oh, they need to know this. Um, if I remember, I'll let you know. Yeah, yeah. Just about do not get involved. Like you're the business owner. There's even words you don't say saying business owner. It just has oh. this. Yeah, my bad. But yeah, so it was a big thing when they think you're the owners, they think you can bend the rules for them. Boom. And usually you do end up bending the rules yeah, you for, do. for them. <laughs> so, and then that ends up messing your pipeline up. It yeah. Literally like, is this like, can I curse on here or? I, mean, <laughs> I think we've covered written? ourselves. I think I've covered it. I'm Irish. I I'm probably have dropped it a few times. So yeah. <laughs> okay. No, because I, I paused for a second, but anyways, you literally, you fuck over your employees. Yeah. Um, they're doing work that they never signed up to do. They don't want to do. You're not getting paid for it. And then they think it's a normal. So then they do it every month. And then they ask you to do it for the friends. And then yeah. pretty much tell them you're a project manager. Tell them you have to talk to your boss. Change the rules. <laughs> And everybody's happy. Everybody wins. Love us. Yeah. No, I've seen it happen. I've seen agency owners as well, because what happens is they're going in and they're responsible for wages for the business. They've mm -hmm. got their ego and there's so many things involved that, yeah, discounts happen. Extra work happens because they're emotionally involved. And as soon mm -hmm. as you can, it's one of the advice I give to agency owners. You've handled it a different way about I'm a project manager. Sometimes I just say, get a salesperson in who has a price list and has to come to you. They're not emotionally mm -hmm. involved. They don't say things in a meeting that are kind of heated and energetic. Yeah. Time. Yeah. It's very, very interesting. What are you excited about when it comes to like 2020 and what's coming down the future? What are you personally excited about in the agency space? So Gary says it a lot. Yes. Um, <laughs> voice. I'm really, really are excited you? for voice. Because yeah. really, like, uh, let me pull up some notes I was thinking about. Yeah. But pretty much, if you really think about it, you are eventually going to be like, hey, Alexa, or hey, Siri, my phone went off, but do this or do this <laughs> for me. And the process of how you're ranked, it's, it's like Instagram in early stages. Right now, you can claim the username. You can get the SEO. It's, yeah. it's just, if you're working on it now, you're going to have light years um, ahead of the competition. When everybody else comes in there, the prices will go up. It's going to be a lot more competition for ranking, um, for getting the SEO or whatever it's going to be called. But right now it's like, let's say you invest in it and it fails. Right. You're not going to, is that failing, losing a few thousand or tens of thousands is better than the regret of being at the end and not even being close to the top. 
when you really want to be, when, you, when you're like aspiring to be. And I feel like autonomous, the AI, all this stuff, um, all the repeatable tasks, and a lot for agency owners, it's scary too. I was really scared. Um, my, my whole job could be replaced. But the thing is, the creative aspect, the strategy aspect will never go away. Never. No, AI, the eventually, side of things never go away. No. Yeah. AI will be predicting, you know, this is better, this is better. But the creative aspects, so as long as you're focusing on nurturing your relationships with your clients, that doesn't mean you giving them favors. It means no, no. them being comfortable with your team, them yeah. liking the work, your process, they're fine. And you can use AI to your advantage yeah. in the sense of you don't need to sit there and make reports. You send, you use um, analytical reporting systems. There's a lot of them out there. Monthly reports sent automatically. That saves yes. you literally a whole job. You don't have to yeah. hire somebody. You just spend 30, mo 30 a month. Yeah. Fi Paul Reitzer was talking about it last week. His mm -hmm. team used to take five hours to do reports. Yeah. And he's now down to, I think it was 20 minutes. So they've way That's more time to learn. You know, it's, it's, it's exactly the future. So if an agency today, say for example, I'll give an example of one of the clients I work with, right? And they have mm -hmm. a travel company is one of their big, big clients. They specialize in, they're in Norway and they specialize in tours in the UK. How would they add that Alexa, Siri kind of, why would they put that into their uh, strategy right now as, as an offering for the client? I don't see it for big things like that. Mm -hmm. Nobody just goes, Alexa, I'm gonna book me a vacation to Jamaica. Yeah. Nobody does that. It's a right. big, the high-end ticket. Where I see the potential for this is, um, uh, I guess Amazon's already in a minute. It's like, Alexa, order me my contact solution, right? Even though Amazon has the predetermined dash buttons, how do you get up there? I don't know. I think it'd be sponsored. Um, mm -hmm. You have to be, I, 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 I'm looking forward to learning about it, but I'm not, I don't know exactly how to yeah. work. But I just want to, you know, spark the minds of people, get them thinking about it. Brilliant. See yeah. What you could do and how you could do it. So B to C, if you've B to C clients as as an mm -hmm. as a, as an or, or yeah B to C clients as an agency, start thinking about is it a re, a renew a subscription thing like mm -hmm. Contact Lens Solution? I think that's a great yeah. one. Or soaps or shampoos or things like that that are bought on Amazon. I think that's I think that's the bit that's I, I was looking for a hook mm -hmm. personally. I, we, I visit the States a lot and every single one of my friends is talking to Siri and is talking to Alexa. Yeah. I have yet to meet anyone in Europe who's even using it. Dad has one. Really? My, uncle, my uncle has one. I personally, I think it's much easier in the States because more or less your accents sound the same. Yeah. We have in this country alone, 32 different types of accents. And I think that has become a, a, a slight barrier. And then we're, we're not even talking about the languages in Europe and the dialects and all of that. I think the uptake has been so much bigger. What I've noticed, just my trips, everyone's using it. Um, I, haven't, I still haven't used it. I, I don't know why, but um, I love the tip. I think it's fantastic. Um, that is really, really cool. Um, what I wanted to just talk about here is we have agencies that are just starting out, right? What would be your, if you were to go back in time and just think about what would be the tip that you would give an agency that is just starting out right now? What would you tell them? I would say, I was, we were at the, um, one of the networking events and somebody also mentioned this, which sparked my mind more, but don't try to use, like you don't only have to use modern day Texas. You don't have to use ads. You don't have to just do YouTube videos. You can go back to old school things Mm -hmm. People don't see anything. For example, when um, email had just come out. Yeah. When you got an email, you were like, oh, I got an email. It's awesome. Now, when you get a letter, you're like, oh, that's awesome. I got a letter. Yeah. So it's like, it goes in a little cycle. So I feel like if you're doing direct mail now, if you're going door to door knocking, I tried that as well. Um, <laughs> you, got, you, you got to have, you know, rough skin for that. Right. Uh, you know, totally. People are like, we're calling the cops. We're calling the It says no solicit. We're calling the cops. And like, yeah. they kick me out or they're like, get out. Like, it, it's really rough. <laughs> But I had closed a few leads. Cold calling still works if you do yes. it correctly. Yes. Email, it's even better now because you can cold call, get their email. That's what you're after. Um, don't try to close it on the, the phone. Put their email in the automation software. Follow up automatically. Yeah. Um, so go back to old school methods because they work. They yeah. just simply work. They do. And the passion you would have picking up the phone and selling a website, you know, you're hungry. You want to make this work. You're, you're probably never going to have that passion again. I guess if we put you on the phone, 
would you you'd probably still do it but probably not with the same passion as you did in the beginning because you've other yeah. things to do now you know whereas at that time it was do this or uh sleep in the car you know it's yeah. like that kind of thing but speaking of your background i'd be really interested to hear where did all this come from where did all this sort of entrepreneurial the fidget mm -hmm. spinners the the whole thing talk about this in your in your you like your so, back yeah for sure my dad he owns a he's an insurance agent so he has a small agency yeah uh, he has two two employees but he's he's always working in his company to date he works in his company <laughs> uh, we want ads for him now we're getting him a lot more so he's oh, expanding cool. five six <laughs> yeah he went from two employees to five six employees with our help amazing um, and hopefully we're gonna help him grow and now we're trying to get his processes straight so he can move out of the business and work on it and then yeah. focus on, you know, more family and things he loves doing. Um, but the bigger picture was he, I always had that mindset of, I don't want, I, I don't know. I've never gotten a job, which is crazy. I've never worked for anybody because uh, every time I've even been put in the position to become like, if there's another leader, I yeah. always end up literally doing a coup and taking over that leader because <laughs> I feel like I have a better idea or um, if there's uh -huh. a leader and, we're all listening to the group, my ideas, I end up start talking and everybody ends up, you know, making me the, the new born leader. So right. it's just, that's something, uh, I don't know if it's, you know, like you just, you're just like that or right. if you can make yourself like that. But I always had that in me. And then uh, I think I wanted to buy a phone and my parents were like, mm, you, no, you need to focus on your school. And they wouldn't let me get a job. Then I was like, okay, I'll figure it out. So I started selling phone cases to buy the phone, which I ended up buying. And then I didn't like it. So I resold that phone by another oh phone. Oh my I just, God. I, I did a little like, yeah. So you never had a paper round phase? No, never had a paper round? No? <laughs> like like a job, like no. No, never had a job. I didn't even have a job. You, um, we'll, we'll get to the kind of end of this, but I wanted to share a little twist. You told me something really interesting when we were talking um, just yeah. after we got back about there was like, I'm listening to you now, your knowledge, your experience, your depth, the size of your agency, the success, the plan you have in the future. I believe you have a story of somebody that worked, you wanted to work with recently. You were giving them advice, mm -hmm. but they didn't want to work with you. Do you want to tell me why? Yeah, honestly, they might be listening to this podcast. Uh, he was a really big rapper. I loved his work. I loved his work. We knew how to help him. We knew it was going to work. He was seemed really interested he was almost ready to sign it was the last meeting where we wanted to show him the, the papers and everything and before that meeting i had mentioned my age and i mentioned i was seven at the time i was i think 15 and a half or 16. the second he heard that he was like i'm not giving or i i don't know but he went in his head you know he doesn't want to give this much money this person he blocked me he stopped responding um there's literally still a stream of text that goes down like hey just following me just checking out and at that point he lost contact with him Mm -hmm. because of my age that really motivated me like cool you know happens right. and then after that that's when I decided I'm a project manager I work Brilliant. for the company yeah. I'm not the boss I yeah. my LinkedIn even if you go to my LinkedIn to date two years two and a half years it says project manager of the company <laughs> um, and, and I learned a lot of things on the way uh, I'd have competition who would come up to me yo why are you working for that company um, you know you don't even and I I try, I try to talk to them a network and they'd put me down they're like you don't know what you're talking about you just you're just a project manager. Stay in your place. And wow. I stayed quiet, and I was yeah. like, "Cool, it's a long-term play. I can." I can it's stay a quiet. long play. So you are 17 today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a year I'm and a half ago. Yeah. yeah, a year and a half ago, when you were trying to work with someone and they didn't know, and like you could have helped them, and and you are a classic example, Faith. I hope that nobody ever does that to you again because your knowledge, your experience. Yeah. I think that's a debt. It's it is. I see what you're doing being the, the project, the secret project manager in the business. Yeah. And, uh, but your experience, you're going to go a long way. So um, I'm really excited. Thanks, to thanks. We're, we're talking, we're chatting about various different things. Anyone out there who would ever judge anyone on their looks, their age, their gender, do you know, like forget it. Those days are yeah. over, man. So mm -hmm. you'll be sorry. <laughs> you'll probably come knocking on your door someday. Um, Faze, how can we get you? How would we, what's the easiest way to, get in touch with the, the best project manager in <laughs> in FISMA. <laughs> uh, pr pretty much um, through my Instagram. I'm sure. always on Instagram, even yeah. though I, I might take like two days to reply, I get a lot of DMs, but it's at the, uh, the T-H-E-F-A-I-Z-I-M-R-A-N, which is my full name, Faze Imran. So shoot me a message there. I'm on LinkedIn. I, I'm like a master connector. I'm always connected. Oh, amazing. Connected. Yeah, yeah. So, um, <laughs> Join LinkedIn, in the dots. Instagram, yeah. pretty much is where you can contact me. 
Beautiful. We'll put the links up here. Um, awesome. You're off to New York now. Where, where's the next place here? Tell me, tell me the next place you're going on a holiday. I want to hear some fun. Um, so I'm looking into you know, relocating to Arizona maybe and nice. LA. So I'm going to check that place out in December. Um, yeah. So that's probably where my next you know, trip is. Uh, after a few months, it would be Arizona, then LA. and Beautiful. Maybe, I want to go to Tokyo too. No, oh, you're going to weird, but very uh, nice, very odd, very nice. Go and check out what's yeah. going on over there. There's, exactly, yeah, yeah. It's it's going off in it's going off in Japan. And if, for anyone who's listening to this, um, you you'll um you'll be listening on. But if you actually want to head over to YouTube, you'll actually see the video for this as well. And Faze is being so completely entrepreneurial here. He's looking great. He's got a cool office behind him. And some people are playing ping pong in the background. Oh, do you guys see that? <laughs> I'll, I'll pan it over to show you guys. You guys want to oh, see it's it? brilliant. It's I spot. just love it. Yeah, yeah. Show us this. Oh, man. This is, really this is running an agency spot. in 2019. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Faze. I will catch Thank up you. with you very soon. Uh, take care. And thanks, everyone, for listening and watching and we will see you on another episode of agency life very very soon bye sure. bye